Hey guys, and welcome back to HR Talks with Leash, a platform aiming to motivate, inspire, and elevate HR interns, students, and professionals to help you kickstart your career. Join me on this journey to success as a HR professional finding her way within the industry and rising to the top. Please can you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always notified every single time I post a video. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. So before we get into this episode, I just wanted to shout out Tanya, who actually suggested this video content to me. She wanted to find out what exactly do I do in HR? She's never had a HR role before and she's just about to get into it. So what does HR administration entail? So she has given me the idea of starting a mini series called Unlocking HR, where I actually talk to you about each of the different parts of my role as a HR administrator in depth so you know what you're getting yourself in for. Alongside what I do in my role, I'm also going to be talking about how I organise myself, how I stay on top of my emails, I try, <laughs> and how I stay on top of my to-do lists, and just how I organise my time effectively. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about the onboarding process that you're most likely going to be involved in if you are doing a HR administration role. This is a process that I'm heavily involved in and there are a lot of processes and steps that are implemented within the onboarding process that you need to know. So if you want to stick around and know more about the onboarding process, grab a cup of tea, get yourself a notepad because this is going to be a lengthy video full of information and let's get started. So what is the onboarding process and why is it important? So the onboarding process is a process whereby newly hired employees are welcomed into an organisation. This helps them to understand their job role and the requirements of them and also helps them to integrate seamlessly into the company if done well. Research has actually shown that if onboarding is done in the right way, this can help with job retention, longevity within the company and also job satisfaction overall as it's important that employees feel that sense of welcome and the sense of engagement from the HR team and also managers and the team that they're integrated into. Onboarding processes can build relationships, they can also build trust and confidence within the employer and everybody around them and ultimately caring for the employee from day one actually helps to allow the employee to feel integrated into a very healthy company culture. So there are many parts to the onboarding process that HR have to be involved in. And we need to be liaising with a lot of different departments within the company to ensure that the integration into this company for them is seamless. The first step of the onboarding process is pre-contract creation. So once the candidate has gone through the interview process, then talent acquisition will give us all the information we need to create a contract. So within the information that they provide us, we have information about the base salary, um, bonuses, any kind of car allowance that they may be entitled to and so forth and all of their personal information so that we can create the contract. So we like to send um, a notification or email out to manage to ensure that we've got everything correct before we actually send the contract out to the candidate. So we talk about probation periods, we need to understand if that aligns with what the manager wants and also notice periods too. And we also confirm that the start date is an okay date for them. And once we've got all that information and we've drafted the contract, then we'll send that draft out. So contracts will differ. Some people may be on permanent contracts, some will be on fixed term contracts, which have a specific end date. And there may be some roles that need specific clauses to be in their contract, whereas other roles may not need specific clauses to be in their contract. So depending on what role you're going into, we have to make sure that we're aligning the contract to that specific role. Once that's all done, then... We will send out a draft version of a contract to the manager and also the HR business partner involved so that they can have a look over it and see if everything is OK and if there needs to be any amendments made. Once that's all done, then we will send out the contract to the candidate. So when we're sending out contracts to the candidate, we like to send a message of congratulations for the offer at our company. And we'll make sure that we include that, you know, we need a signed version back it's really important that we get this back because then we're able to get going with setting them up onto the system. So once we get the signed contract back, this is when we will input data into a system that we have called PeopleSoft. Now, I think PeopleSoft is very generic across like HR. Um, you know, you might use different systems to PeopleSoft, but it is one that I guess is known. And this is a system whereby you put all the information about the employee 
into it so we're talking about personal information information about their job information about how many hours they're working compensation um all their personal details with address numbers etc etc national insurance numbers everything goes onto this system and it's really important that we get it right because other departments within the organization are relying on the data that we put into people soft so for example finance rely on it because they need to know headcounts um, those who deal with the bonus payouts use the data from the system to ensure that everyone gets the right bonus payouts um, on their pay slips. So it is very important that we're putting the right figures in to the PeopleSoft um, database and also just the right correct information as well. The information that we get is populated into these systems. We also send out like documents that the new hire needs to sign. So for example, we send out a personal record form. So we've got all the details, like if we need any additional details, everything we need would be on there. Also, we'd send out um, the HMRC start, new starter checklist. So if someone doesn't have a P45, then they would fill this out just to make sure that um, in terms of taxes, everything is in the system correctly. We also send out reference forms so that we can um, request references um, from previous employers of this employee. And we also send out um, a little handbook about our company so that the employee can have a read about this before they come into the company to get familiar with who we are as a company. So as I said before, what we're doing affects many different departments. So we will have to send out like a new hire email and it includes like all of the different people that will need to be doing something within this onboarding process for that new employee. So as I said, finance needs to know this for headcount and also IT need to be involved because they're the ones who are gonna be distributing out laptops to people whether they're starting from the office or they're starting at home. So we need to liaise with IT to ensure that they're on the same page. They know when they're starting and they know when um, the certain information is created from PeopleSoft so that they can then utilise that to set up that employee's laptop. Also, facilities need to know because they're the ones who are going to be sorting out the seats for the new employees when they come into the office. And also in this time that we're now sending out lateral flow tests to the employees because they need to take tests before coming into the office in my organisation. So these are all very important things that need to be done within the onboarding process before the employee comes to the company. Throughout this whole process as well, we need to ensure that managers are informed all the way through. So when we're sending out this new hire email, we need to make sure that the manager is involved with this because they need to know what's going on with the status of the new hire that is coming into the company. We also send out onboarding guides to the managers as well because they need to be liaising with the employee before their first day. We actually say that it's really good that they have connections with them beforehand so that they can introduce themselves to the new employee and also talk about and send out a plan of what the week is going to look like for them when they start so that the new employee knows exactly what's happening and this is really this is a very structural way of doing onboarding because some companies don't do anything like what i'm describing right now so another thing that you need to remember as a hr administrator is you are in charge i'm ensuring that all of these files that are getting sent through are saved into the hr filing system that you have you also need to make sure that you're documenting, well, this is what we do anyway, we document each different stage of the process to ensure that we've got everything covered. Also, payroll is affected by new employees, aren't they? So we need to make sure that we are inputting the right information into our payroll folders so that when um, our payroll specialist is processing payroll, they know exactly who this new employee is and how, like, what they need to set them up to ensure that everything is smooth for them on their first day and the first few months in the company. So day one is finally here and the employee has just started the company. So what happens um, from the HR administration side at this point is that we need to make sure that we're sending out a new starter email. So this email will include all of their personal information um, to get them started in the company. So we include their email address and their like unique employee ID as well. And we also like to include information about where they can find all the HR policy documents that we provide, um, the payroll system and how that works, um, and information on expenses and also 
information about where they can find anything that is very important for someone just starting out the company to know. So we have like an internal communication platform where we've got all the information needed on this platform. So we will um, put links to that in the schema as well so that they are set up and ready and they can have a look through to see what needs to be done on the first day. Also, we as HR administrators will need to populate the system with a few things. So there might be specific benefits um, that they will be auto enrolled in on the first day. So you may need to input information on these systems to ensure that they're auto enrolled on their first day. We also have an onboarding presentation that we will present on the first day to do employees. And this will talk about our mission statements, our company values, people within the organization, within management, and also how our internal communication system is run and the benefits that we have as a company. So we will present this to the employee. Um, I had been doing this virtually like since I started my job in this company because of the pandemic and everything, but now we're starting to slowly integrate into doing this in person. And I think the employees are really kind of happy that now it's being done in this way because there's more engagement with other new starters as well. And you know, you can have a laugh, you can really enjoy the moment with these new starters and welcome them into the company in a great way. It's also nice to be in the office to do this because you know, I can have conversations with the new starters and if they've got any kind of questions on that day, you can also kind of get that out of the way and sort anything, any differences out that may need sorting out. So it's really nice to do that. Also on the first day, we try and take ID checks. So now ID checks have to be done in person. And this was a change from like the 1st of July. Um, it had to be done in person because in the pandemic, you were able to do it via video call because obviously we weren't allowed in the offices. But yeah, so now it's changed. We are making sure that we do that. And in the case that HR are unable to do that, then management will also be able to um, get those scanned for us. So there's just a lot of like tidying up in terms of documentation. And just trying to get everything correctly done in the system so that there's no hiccups in the process. There also might be some trainings that the new employee needs to do from day one onwards within the company. So it's important to make sure that they are aware of this, the trainings that they need to do and aware of how to access them too. So that this is our responsibility as HR. And we also try and prompt managers to make sure that they are ensuring that the new employee is doing this. But this experience for them on day one is really good to help them to integrate into the company. And it's great to also hear positive feedback. The other day I did an onboarding and I got some really positive feedback from somebody who said that the onboarding was a great chance for them to integrate and understand the company, but also meet other people. And they're really happy with the way that we were able to do that. So I would say as well, if you're joining a company and maybe the onboarding processes may not be completely there from what you're seeing it's really good to be that person to raise new ideas as well because we always love to be improving our processes and at the moment that's what we're trying to do as well so it's great to have that kind of um eye for trying to change things and make experiences better for those who are joining the company because as i said at the start of this video onboarding is a very 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 important part of the process for a new employee so onboarding doesn't just stop at day one um, in my company, we have a day 30 and then a day 90. In other companies, onboarding can last from the first day to a year. Um, and we like to make sure that we've got places to refer back to, if anything. So we've got like platforms and information guides where new employees can always refer back to them if need be. So that is my take on HR onboarding as a HR administrator. And I hope that I've explained the tasks that I've done to you in some kind of detail. If you want more detail on the onboarding process or you need a part two, you need a bit more explanation on that, comment down below and let me know. If there's a specific process that you would like to see me do in the Unlocking HR series that I'm going to do, then please comment down below and let me know what you want to hear from me so that I can make that content and make it readily available to you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.